on single phase with a six, 60 amp breaker. Let's turn this on. All right. Power on. All right. Twenty horse Worthington compressor, three cylinder, six six four and a half. Uh, old compressor, zero zero pressure in the tank. That's an oil pressure gauge. 120 gallon tank. 20 horse motor. It's uh, geared for belted for it's supposed to turn at 1090 rpm it produces it fills the tank in about 83 seconds produces about 79 cubic feet a minute of air you know it's running on single phase with the transformer converter and the 16 amp breaker thing here we have a 60 amp breaker and uh, I got my two single phase leads coming in there. I had to, I had actually two twos on each side, but I had to cut it down because I couldn't fit in the little slots there. Then I have my wires, my two wires here, going up into the to run the compressor, and then there's ground and neutral wire there. I just ground the neutral because, for my purposes, that's fine for this. So we're going to start 20 horse air compressor. Uh, on single phase with a six, 60 amp breaker. Let's turn this on. All right. Power on. All right. 60 pounds. Oh. All that. <laughs> and a 60 amp breaker. Okay, I just wanted to go over what I, I filmed there, and I, I was thinking about it. See, at first I was real shocked, and I think you picked that up in the videos. I, I couldn't believe that we're starting this thing with a, a 20 horse, uh, a 20 horse motor with a 60 
16 amp breaker. But then I, I remember, and I do, I do know this, that uh, the transformer converter is a much, much more efficient method of starting and a lot of times running these motors. And I did have, when I, I sold many years ago, I was selling a DVD set and I sold a whole ton of those to Australia, England, and Ireland. And all those guys wanted them because they have really dinky electric services back there. Uh, you know, some of these guys are dealing with a 60, the whole thing for their whole house is 60 amps. It's unbelievable that these people would do that. But anyway, and some of the guys in Australia, they're way out on the end of a line or something. It's, it's kind of a flaky system. So anyway, those guys built my transformer converters and they loved them because they could run their motors uh, and get them started. Whereas a rotary converter, you know, you're not just not going to do it, especially on a 60 amp breaker here, you know. So that's, that's the reason why we're able to do this. And we pumped it to, we did pump it to 160 pounds on the 60 amp breaker, which is pretty, and it was drawn, when it was at 160, I looked over at the ammeter, it was drawn 70 amps. So that breaker was probably just ready to go. Anyway, and I do remember that the other day I was playing around and I had, like I said, I have the breaker in the panel over there. It's, it's all across the shop where the electric comes in. And I did trip that 60 amp. And that's what alert, that's what made me realize, okay, we're dealing with a 60 amp breaker here because I thought that I had the 100. The 100 is way out on the post out there that I flip on. There's extra wires and all that stuff. So I remember that that breaker did trip when I, when I went to start the motor, but that's because I started it like 10 times in like, three minutes, I was on and off, on and off, on and off, and then and blam, all the, br the breaker went. So the breakers are working, and it's, it's they're tripping, it's just that this thing is so efficient in starting with the transformer converter, you can start a motor like this, at, you know, on a 60 amp breaker, and I would recommend this, you know, I mean, uh, okay, you know, we have excellent wires over here, so it's not like we're getting voltage drop, it's just we're cutting it through the 60 amp. Now, what I did is I, now I have my book on Amazon and I sell this. This tells you how to build a transformer converter, the rotary converter. It describes all sorts of hooking up capacitors and hooking up the motors and doing all the stuff. I mean, it's, it's, got, a, it's got, you know, a lot of pages and a lot of, a lot of pictures, a lot of stuff in there. And uh, I even talk about, uh, you know, I, I, do, I did a couple of videos on that too about how much electricity these things use. And like this, this one, when I first tested, I want to make sure everything's going right. So I, you know, there's not something wrong with the compressor pump itself. So I tested out and it was, uh, it's 14 kilowatts running and four and a half kilowatts, I think 4.23 or 4.5 kilowatts idling. So 14 and four. So every time this is idling, because it has the valves on here, you can idle it. So every time it, you know, he pumps up and it's idles like, and, and that was at hundred PSI. I was figuring like sandblasting you're using the 100 PSI thing. So, you know, obviously it's going to use a lot more than 14 kilowatts to take it up to 175 or whatever. But anyway, that's the whole deal. Now, to, now you got to remember too, if you're not, if you're not up on this three-phase conversion stuff, to run this motor reliably on a rotary converter, you could call a rotary converter company up and tell them, yeah, I got a 20 horse air compressor. They're going to tell you, well, you really need, you know, to really, you know, you know, really need to do it reliably. You know, I mean, you need like three times so 20 times three is 60. Now they don't make 60 horse motors. So you're gonna end up buying a 75 horse rotary converter. So you would buy, that's what kills me about the whole thing. You would buy, you go down and you buy a brand new, beautiful, oh, awesome, gorgeous looking 75 horse motor. Whoa, I mean, that's a gorgeous motor. 75 horse, and you got it sitting there in your shop. And the reason you bought the 75 horse motor, which I, I, they're like 3000 bucks or something like that, it's because you want to run the 20 horse. See, you buy the you buy the 75 horse, and you get that run in your shop, so you can run a 20 horse. See, that's what doesn't make sense to me. I mean, why would why would a person buy a 75 horse motor so they can run a 20 horse motor? It doesn't make sense. But anyway, this transformer method, you saw it. It starts it on a, a 60 amp breaker. Now you call up your rotary converter guy, and you ask him and say, Yeah, I got a 60 amp breaker. Can I run my 20 horse air compressor? The guy's going to tell you, No, forget it. It's not going to work. He, I think he could call Face Perfect up, and Face Perfect is going to tell you, What are you, ridiculous? That's nuts. Yeah, they're going to want 150 amps, or 125 amps, or something breaker going into their stuff because they, they you need it to get it started. But transformer converter works really good. Try it.